Hello guys and welcome to another calculus and integrals video. Today we're going to be discussing what's called closing the contour and I think it's a really important and just cool uh, topic that we can use in order to evaluate lots of integrals, verify Laplace transforms, and in general just be a lot more rigorous when we're talking about some very um, sketchy strategy stuff that's not super rigorous and although I'm not one who focuses on rigor I think it's an important topic and an important concept for us to understand when we're doing all these complicated integrals. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So what closing the contour is, is it's it's basically assuring us that um, the Laplace transform of a function is valid even when s is not real. So what I mean by this is when we prove the Laplace transform of a function, usually we'll just assume that s is real. For example, the Laplace transform of t to the n, we do by making a u substitution, st equals u, and then t equals u over s, dt equals du over s, so on and so forth, right? So this integral equals the integral from 0 to infinity of u over s to the n, e to the negative u, du over s, or gamma of n plus 1 over s to the n plus 1, right? The problem with this is that this assumes that s is both positive and real. And the reason for that is when we make this substitution, we did not change our bounds at all, because we're assuming that as t goes to infinity, u will also go to infinity. But if, say, s was in this case 1 plus i, then really we would both be going to infinity times 1 plus i which is a little bit sketchy, so we'll just, so the way I would usually change it is just say that this is um, r, or r times 1 plus i, and all of this is limit as r goes to infinity. So what we can actually do in order to prove that these integrals are still the same, despite the fact that we're not integrating on a straight line from 0 to infinity, is what's called closing the contour. So essentially, what we need to do at, uh, I'm going to just look at the case of the Laplace transform of a t to the n first. What we need to prove is that the integral from zero to inf um, the integral from zero to r times a plus b i of um, u to the n e to the negative u du equals the integral from zero to r of u to the n e to the negative u du. And the great way that we can do this is we can actually graph out the complex plane. Now for this, I will be assuming that um, the real part of s is greater than 0, because that is necessary for the integral to converge in the first place. So if we go ahead and draw this out, this integral right here is going to be on the real axis line. So it's going to be going outwards like this, all the way out to r. And our imaginary integral is going to be going somewhere out over here. It could also be below here, but we're going to assume that the imaginary part is also greater than zero. You'll see that it doesn't really change anything anyway. And so, in order to actually kind of prove that these are the same, what we're going to do is we're going to close the contour, exactly what this method is called. So by closing the contour, what we're actually doing is connecting these two integrals, right? Now what you have to do is consider the contour integral, which is made by this section in the complex plane. So let's assume that we're going this way. Then the integral of f of z dz is zero, because at least in this case, u to the n has no asymptotes, has no poles, right? So there's nothing we need to worry about here. And this is also equal to our blue integral minus our red integral, because our red integral is going backwards, right? Plus our white integral. That's just representing these different colors that are over here. You know, this is the blue integral, this is the red integral, this is the white integral. And the great thing about the white integral is this is actually a um, integral that's way out super far on the complex plane. And since for every part of this white integral, we, we can draw a little dotted line here, this white integral has e to the negative u, right? So in most cases, now I'm not going to go ahead and rigorously prove that because this is a relatively short video. Since this is sort of all past here, this is all going to be multiplied by e to the negative r. And e to the negative r 
is a very, very, very small number, and so our white integral essentially will always go to zero. The only time it won't go to zero is either a, our function of t, which doesn't always have to be u to the n, it could be some other function, has some kind of exponential growth, or b, the integral extends all the way over here, right? And it were if it were this integral instead, we would run into some problems. So that's why we need the real part of s to be greater than zero. So let's look at a more specific example of this, because in this case, if you look at that, that white integral is going to disappear. And so zero is actually equal to red um, minus or blue minus red, which means that blue equals red. Now, sorry for, again, the use of the colors as a metaphor, but if you look at this, this is just the blue integral, right? And this is the red integral. So we can say that these two integrals are equal to one another. And so it actually doesn't matter that we're multiplying by this a plus bi here, and we'll actually get the same exact result for the integral. Now let's look at a more specific example for this. In a previous video, I took on the integral 0 to infinity of e to the negative x sine of x ln x dx. And the way I did this was I just took the imaginary part of integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative uh, 1 minus i x ln x dx. And I then just applied the Laplace transform of ln x. However, that's not entirely valid in this situation. Well, well, the reason for that is because when we substitute u equals 1 minus i times x, du equals 1 minus i dx, then we're actually going to get the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to r times 1 minus i, limit as r goes to infinity, right, of e to the negative u, ln u over 1 minus i, du over 1 minus i. And so we can go ahead and simplify and split all this up. But really, what we need to do is prove that this integral is also equal to the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to r of e to the negative u, ln u over 1 minus i, du over 1 minus i. We need to prove that this is equal. And so in order to do that, we can write out the exact same thing as before. If we draw our complex plane here, I'm only going to include the fourth quadrant because that's what I need here. We can have our integral taking its path down here, then curving back to the real axis and ending over here. So this is the path of our contour. And since there are no poles on the uh, area of integration, now obviously we do need to um, avoid u equals zero, so we'll have a little bit of a keyhole there, but that's not going to end up really mattering. Um, so we'll have a keyhole there, right? This outer integral we know will go to zero because uh, ln u does not have any exponential growth, and so that means that the e to the negative u will dominate, and so this outer integral will go to zero, right? So we don't need to worry about that. And all we're left with is this integral and this integral, which are which correspond to this line and this line respectively. And since we know that negative one of the integrals plus the other integral equals zero by Cauchy's integral contour integration theorem, then those two are equal to each other. And so basically this closing the contour just allows us to prove that it doesn't matter if S is purely real or it's a complex number with real and imaginary parts. In most cases, the Laplace transform will be valid even for imaginary numbers. Now I do say most cases because if there's poles in the function, then that won't work. However, luckily, we don't usually deal with the Laplace transforms of functions which have poles. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit and you were maybe a little bit more convinced of the strategies that I've used in past videos. Uh, I think that this is really important just for us to learn in order to make sure that we understand everything that we're talking about when we're uh, doing math problems when we're solving integrals because if we're just blindly using strategies like the Laplace transform without understanding why they work in every possible way um, in every possible way that we use them what are we really learning overall so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time